Luca glanced outside to gauge the time. The sky was darker than he expected, filled with ominous clouds. Luca wiped his mouth one last time with his napkin and started to get up. Surprised, Luca turned around. He knew Rolo could be prickly around new people. But Beck seemed cool. Rolo would warm up to her eventually. Probably. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to rumble with ominous thunder. surveyed the roiling clouds. At that moment, the heavens opened up, unleashing torrential rain. into the eye hole of the microscope. Luca adjusted the slide with his fingers to get a better look. Luca wiped his hand off on his sweater and gave a nervous laugh. Beck looked down, timidly tapping the ladder with her feet. at one of the toggles. Luca bent down to examine the bouquet of wilting flowers. Judging by the odor, they were well past their prime. He flipped open the attached card.
watch the rivulets of water running down the window. Luca took a deep breath, exhaling slowly. as it began, the storm abated. Beck gave Luca a light thump on the arm before heading in. Chapter 5. Friendly Feud. The air was heavy with a hard rain's residue. The smell of wet things. Despite his dreary surroundings, Luca felt at peace. He'd never shared those details about his dad with anyone. Not even Rollo. But it's not like this changed anything. Rollo was still his best friend. Adding back to the group would help balance things out. Everything's better in threes. This is what Luca told himself as he headed to the treehouse.
Luca had only ever heard him speak in this stiff yet gentle tone a few times, and it always meant one thing. Rolo scoffed. Luca stumbled on his words, knowing he'd said too much. Luca became instinctively angry in response. Both boys were now shouting across the distance. Rolo's tone changed to a calm, yet more intense, anger. The words hung in the cold night air. Rolo's stomach dropped, knowing he'd crossed a line. But it was too late. Luca dug through his old stuff, not even sure what he was looking for. Gran cooed gently from the hallway. Luca just wanted to be alone. He waited to hear the sound of the front door closing.
Luca dozed off again. Luca still couldn't bring himself to go out. Besides, if he ran into Rolo, he'd have to actually confront the situation. The Adventures of Hank Atomic. Luca carefully opened the cover and began to read. Rollo had received it for his birthday, a special hardcover edition with behind the scenes commentary and bonus art. Rollo cherished it, but asked that Luca keep it at his house. Luca wasn't sure if it was because Rollo didn't trust himself with it, didn't trust his sister around it, or just wanted an excuse to come hang out at Luca's more often. Whatever the reason, Luca didn't mind, but it had stayed right there where Rollo had stashed it ever since. Now, at the foot of his bed, Luca lost himself in the pages. He'd read it all before, but at this moment, it somehow felt sentimental. He was well into issue number five when he heard soft footsteps from the hallway. Without realizing it, Luca had pouted away the entire afternoon. He once again felt the weight of it all and allowed his weary eyes to close. Luca stood in a vast black expanse. He looked up at his father standing beside him. Walt was working a straw at the bottom of a fountain glass, trying to collect the last bits of milkshake. Dad, where are we? Taking a final loud gurgling sip, his father peered up from the glass. He jangled the straw playfully with a warm smile, then lifted the empty glass as if to point into the darkness. The source? Luca's eyes followed his father's gesture. In an instant, he was sitting in front of a blazing campfire. Across from him sat a large figure in a yellow hazmat suit. The figure's voice was a scratchy echo. Well, if it isn't the man of the hour, make yourself comfortable. Luca held his shivering hands over the flame to warm himself. It doesn't work that way here. Their yellow-gloved hand pointed to the base of the flame. It's a cold flame. See? Luca peered at the base of the fire. It wasn't wood that was burning. It was Beacon Pines itself. Tiny buildings, freezing and crumbling as they were consumed by flame. Luca could see small shadows moving in the burning city. People. Luca leapt to his feet. We've got to help them! The figure gave a dismissive wave of their hand. Why waste energy helping people who can't even help themselves? The figure bent down to examine the panicked crowd as they desperately tried to stop the flames. They only care about what's right in front of them. Not like us. Luca's voice was a trembling whisper. Us? The figure slowly stood up, grabbing its helmet with both hands, with a jolt and a twist. The suit emitted a gasp. A cloud of torpid mist escaped, slowly revealing the face within. Luca's own face looked back at him, older, worn, distant. The sensation was oddly familiar, as if he'd caught his own reflection by surprise in the mirror. The doppelganger smiled. I tried to help once. He gestured towards his face. And all it got me was this. Luca staggered back. You aren't me. Luca felt a hand catch his shoulder. His father was there again, beside him. Every choice sets us on a path. This is the end of one of your paths, son. 
Luca watched his older self shake its head ruefully, its face twisting into a cruel grin. Well, Dad, if you wanted him to see this, far be it from me to disappoint. Luca watched in shock as the figure took a confident step forward and plunged into the flames. In a flash of cold light, he was gone. What does all of this mean? Luca felt a reassuring squeeze on his shoulder. Just remember why we choose matters just as much as what we choose. Luca woke up to see a hazy figure at the foot of his bed, silhouetted in the morning sun. Luca rubbed his eyes. The kind, concerned face of his gran came into focus. Gran silenced Luca with a gentle pat on the leg. gave a reluctant nod. Chapter 6 Through Thick and Thin Despite Luca's bitterness, Gran was right. He needed to hash things out with Rollo. A big fight changes the nature of a friendship. Whether, in the end, it is for the better or for the worse, all comes down to understanding. If one is not careful, the same familiarity that builds the strongest of bonds can become the wrecking ball that shatters them. Luca emerged from seclusion, taking in the crisp festival air. But the events of the day weren't on his mind. He had to find Rollo. 